what's up guys? My name is Zach and today we're going to be taking a look at all the parts of a 12A rotary engine. And it's relatively similar for the 13B. Um, the 13B is just more, it, it's actually fuel injected but that doesn't really change the actual engine block layout except it's slightly larger. So the way that the rotary engine comes apart is it actually comes apart in slices. There's bolts that go all the way through the engine that hold it together so once you take those bolts out you can really spread it apart. It's, it's not like a regular uh, piston engine where you kind of take stuff off it, it just comes apart, I guess, horizontally, if, if you will. So we'll start from the front and move towards the back. So to kick off the video, we will start with the obvious, which is the rotors. Now this is a 12A rotor out of a 12A rotary engine, obviously, and uh, there's two of these per engine, and as you can see, there are little grooves at the tip of each of the triangles. And in there is a little piece called an apex seal. The apex seal is what touches the edges of the housing and uh, kind of sections off each combustion chamber to allow combustion to happen and to keep compression. These are infamous for blowing. If you've heard anything about the rotary engine, you probably hear that the apex seals blow. And that's actually just these little metal pieces these little metal pieces that go at the tips of the triangles, these are the things that blow. And actually, on this rotor, the apex seal did blow, which is why I took the engine uh, completely apart. So these are the rotors. These are equivalent to pistons uh, within the engine, and they rotate like that. And uh, that's what gives you power. Next, we got the eccentric shaft. Now, if you know anything about regular combustion engines, piston engines, you know of the crankshaft. Well, this is the same concept. It has two counterweights on it, and the two rotors lock into either end, and as the rotors rotate, it rotates the eccentric shaft, sending the power out of the engine. It's pretty heavy, honestly. Um, not really much to it. It's one solid piece, which is really nice because you have this moving, you have the two rotors moving, and that's it. That's all you have moving within the rotary engine, which is pretty neat. So this is the 12A front cover. Um, as you can see, it just keeps everything uh, inside the engine. Oil would flow in the back here. Um, and the eccentric shaft bolts, uh, has a bolt out here and you have your pulleys and whatnot. Um, this is really important for if you're doing a 13B swap or any swap into a first gen chassis uh, because it has these four bolt holes uh, for the front engine mount. So this is really important and this will be going on my new 13B engine uh, once I build that up. So again, it's just a front cover. You'd have your air conditioning and uh, power steering pumps connect right here, bolt onto here, and you have your front engine mount here. And uh, that's really it. It's just a really simple piece of metal, but it's really important if you want to do a swap. So here we have our front plate. So this is the actual part of the engine block. This is the first slice. Um, and as you can see, uh, the front cover goes on here, as you just saw. and. Uh, if we come around the back, the first rotor will actually sit right in here, and it'll rotate. So as you can see, it's a very smooth surface uh, for combustion, and right here you have uh, an inlet port. Now when people talk about they're porting their engine, uh, street port, bridge port, those sorts of things, they're talking about this area right here, and another uh, exhaust area that I'll show you in a second. So they actually cut these larger. Now, I, I might do a whole video on porting and stuff like that. Um, but that's what they're talking about, this little inlet, because this lets air and get fuel into the engine. Up next is our first rotor housing. Now this is actually where the rotor sits. It sits inside here, just like that. And uh, obviously it rotates around, creating uh, the combustion cycle. It's hard to do with just your hands. So as you can see, it's a pretty thin piece. It's actually pretty light, and um, it has an exhaust port right here, and as you guys saw, it had an inlet port on the actual face. Uh, you have two spark plugs. Each housing has two spark plugs, a leading and a trailing. That's because combustion happens so fast uh, that the first spark plug doesn't always burn all the fuel and air all the way the first time. So this is the rotor housing, which is very important for the combustion cycle, and this is what the apex seals actually touch. So here is the center plate, which goes in between the two combustion chambers, the two different housings. And it's like the front plate. Uh, as you can see, it has the inlet port, and so is this backside. It has the water jets uh, 
or canals, I guess, around the outsides for cooling. Uh, and it also has the oil filler cap and nose, or neck, sorry, not nose, and um, dipstick, which doesn't do anything anymore because it's out of the car. And this just separates the two combustion chambers and has uh, the surface on both sides. So it's just a center plate um, to kind of separate the two. So after the center plate comes the second rotor housing. So obviously this one has the two spark plugs leading and trailing, just like the first one. I did take the first one out just while taking the engine out, but it, it does have two uh, spark plugs. It has the same exhaust ports and everything as the first uh, combustion chamber. It's, rel it's basically the same piece. Uh, it's just in the rear for the second rotor, which is connected to the same eccentric shaft. Again, you have your cooling on the outside and a lot of different seals that will go through. And here, you have uh, your exhaust manifold will bolt up right here. And um, this is the housing. This is the, the rear housing. Last but not least, you have the rear plate. So this is the very back of the engine and hooks onto the rear uh, rotor housing. So like we've seen before, uh, it has the same contact surface and inlet port, which, again, if you're porting, you'd make this bigger. Um, really the importance of this piece is when you come around the back, this is what connects to your flywheel uh, and brings the power to the rest of the car. Uh, so the transmission bell housing hooks up right about here and it'll send the power through the transmission. So I guess the transmission would be like closer to you guys uh, in this scenario. Up here you have the oil filter location. You have an oil cooler line down here and different uh, cooling ports and stuff like that. So this, is the, uh, that's a, so this is the very rear of the engine. So when it's all bolted together, this would be touching the transmission. Before I end the video, I'll leave you guys with a few links about this engine. Uh, this engine came out of my 1985 Mazda RX-7. Um, if you guys want to see a video of it when it was running, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, if you guys want to see where my build is currently, because I'm swapping it to a 13B, I'll leave a link to that. And if you guys want to check out anything else on my channel, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, just in case you're curious, because I'm, I'm a huge Rotary fan and that's most of what my content is. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a thing or two about the Rotary engine. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Thank you.